American Institute of Certified Public Accountant oh, language that every audit report has. And, and it, I, again, I have to go back to that word implied. It's just implied that you have that fiduciary responsibility. Thank you. So, I mean, really, that, that's the bulk of the opinion. That's that's all we're <coughs> looking for here. So if you want to switch gears, do you want to go in order here and go to the MDMA? Sure. Um, and then one quick thing is I, I yep. do want to, uh, no, just going back to the audit report, this, again, the statements are management's responsibility. This is the only thing we claim in these two pages. Right. I know. In this report. I know. And everything else is management. I know. I know. I just want to be clear. I know. I know. But I can attest that they did plenty of work looking <laughs> at the rest of it. There were four of them here for four days or something like that, and they were getting us and having a good time. So we had fun preparing. Four people times four days. Okay. And they asked for everything. You should have been there. Um, okay. So the table of contents kind of summarizes financials. You, we just talked about the independent audit report, then it goes to MDNA, which is the management's discussion and analysis. After that are the basic financial statements. The notes follow that, and then you have the supplementary information that's required. Um, the MDNA kind of summarizes all of that. It's our chance to brag about the accomplishments of the district during the year, and it also explains a lot of the variances and changes from last year to this year. So I'll just talk about the MDNA, and then if you want to get into the, the financial statements and the notes themselves, we can do that. But so if you look at page four, first page of the MDNA. Mm -hmm. Um, the financial highlights are the exciting part. Uh, as you can see, well, the first bullet says water costs increased by $5.2 million. The second one, and that's actually a result of the first full year of the desal plant being online, um, and increased demands because of the, um, the drought reduction. The second bullet talks about water sales. They're at $4.4 million, which is obviously less than $5.2 million. Um, and then, that's kind of what the third bullet says. Uh, the fourth bullet talks about the... Can I ask you a question? Sure. Where's the bullet point, or, or where do we blend in? I don't know the term that was used. Um, the first four years I was here, I heard that we're charging slightly more for water because we're going to be, I don't want to say blending, I don't want to say... Uh, Phase it. We're ramping in. Or phase in. We're, ramping. we're phasing in. The ramping. End. We're phasing in. So it would be a, a very small little curve there, rather than a big jump. Shot. That apparently didn't happen? Well, this is when desal kicked in, we had a 26% increase in our costs. Mm -hmm. But obviously, we didn't, you know, graze our rates 26%. And that's where it kind of starts phasing in at the point. Where right, our but the cost four years prior, we were stepping up to the fees in. We, we, so there was some money in that pot. We had some rate stabilization money. Thank that you. Was used rate there. stabilization, yeah. yes. We don't have any more. <laughs> I don't see where that was used. Yeah, that was, How much was there from rate stabilization over the previous four years? Yeah, th these are the financials. So for, for the audit report and stuff like that, I understand. Uh, I understand. there's no, uh, we don't show reserves here. Our budget will show that. Our budget report has reserves and long-range uh, planning and stuff like that. So will you be able to get back to us and tell us how much the money that was that was put aside? Yeah, I, I was, almost remember off the top of my head it was... We put aside every year for stabilization. I remember you saying it almost every meeting. Yeah. How much well, we had to get a full reserve, full replacement reserves first. So I think there was only one year where we actually had positive rate stabilization and it happened to be right before that desal kicked in and then it went away. So that was... 100, 100, 200. It wasn't a heck of a lot of money. It wasn't a million, and it was hundreds of thousands. Okay. But I've got I've got those exact numbers because it's history. You know. no, I'm sorry, it was more of a finance question than an audit yeah. question. Yeah, it's getting more into reserves. It was just the financial. Um, so this year we collected 3.5 million dollars more in cat fees. Um, <clears throat> we also had we actually had a reduction in capital acquisition probably as a result of a conservative budget and, uh, and a little cut back there. Um, we paid down $3.3 million of our long-term debt, which is a positive. We have a total of $56.2 million outstanding as of the end of the fiscal year. Uh, you can see that in note seven, it's actually broken out better there. Um, the district had an operating loss this year of $1.5 million. This is the second year in a row we've had an operating loss. Last year it was $800,000. 
But we did actually increase our net position by $4.9 million, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. I want to, yeah, I want you to explain how those two work together, because that's, not being a finance person, it seems that you blend that and come up with something in a positive note. But yeah, and you'll see it has to do with uh, contributed capital being in excess of the net operating loss. Does it have the, to put which shell you put the money under? Nope, there's no shells. We don't do that kind of stuff. Oh, well, I'm, <laughs> I don't really need the shells. And just to explain it quickly, you, there's it's standard reporting that you report your net loss, but then you have capital contributions, which are capital facility fees, <coughs> and then assets developed and contributed to the to the district. So if a developer comes in, puts in a, a main line, turns it over to the district, we put that on our books. That's contributed capital. So that's what mitigated the loss. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. And then two other positive notes. In May of 2017, Fitch actually affirmed our AA plus rating with a stable outlook. In June of 2017, the board of directors approved the cost service study and rate structure with rate increases effective March 2018. Those are the <coughs> highlights. Yeah, the question. It was. Oh, yeah. What's the highest uh, that we can get from Fitch? Is it AAA plus or AAA? AAA. AAA. So we're leaving high as so we're, so we're, we're one we're one notch below the highest? I we're actually we better than triple A. Double A plus is better than triple A. Oh it is. So is this the best you can get? I think this oh. I, I just had this conversation today with a couple of triple A agencies or one triple A agency, Santa Fe. And uh, I just say that because when you're at triple A, you know, there's 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 certain things it takes to get to triple A and a lot of it it has to do with your cash position. So when you're triple A how much more cash did you accumulate and didn't have to to maintain your AAA? Yeah. I mean, when yeah. you're AA plus, you kind of have an insurance policy that you're not gouging. Yeah. Your, yeah. And that's, that's the way I look that's at it. Anyway. So that's why I say AA plus is better than AAA. Is there a AAA minus? No. I guess AA plus, AA plus AAA. AAA. Yeah. Is your interpretation generally accepted? Uh, only for AA plus rated agencies. <laughs> it's, it's a bragging. Not for AAA rated agencies. They, they I, would I not would agree. It's your interpretation. Yes. I liked it. Yeah. If you had, if you had a billion dollars in reserves, like to have somebody, that in somebody put that money in there, yeah. right? I think if you were saying that we were leaving high, you prefer the AAA. That's right. We will argue that the AAA is best. So the next couple of pages kind of talk about the, the statements themselves, so I won't bore you with the details of that, but I want to kind of move on to the current year to prior year analysis. So if you look at page six, um, at the bottom, that table there, First of all, you can see the sources of uses and cash investments above that. I'll kind of talk about that in a minute, so I just want to point that out to you in the middle of the page. Um, but the current year to prior year analysis, we do have an increase in that position of $4.9 million this year, uh, attributable to contributed capital in, in excess of the operating loss and the ingest, our adjustment in the EWIN investment, which is actually tends to be a $2 million loss or so every year. Uh, but contributed capital is high enough, so we're able to get a positive net position of $4.9 million. So the table below that shows the, the assets and liabilities and the changes in that position. And there are bulleted items on the next page that discuss that. Um, cash investments increased by $6.5 million during the year, inclusive of the market value adjustment. And that's where the sources and uses comes in on the previous page. That's the inflows and outflows of cash, and that explains where the increase came from. So the next one is the capital asset decreases during the year. Uh, the result of depreciation of assets in excess of asset additions. So we had more depreciation than we had purchased assets or uh, capitalized assets. The receivables and the capital facility fee increases during the year drove uh, an increase in the other assets category. We had deferred outflows increased by $2.8 million during the year. Uh, that was mostly the result of a very confusing actual versus projected investment earnings in our retirement plan as calculated by PERS. Um, that's a whole GASB 68 issue, and these guys can probably explain yeah. that a lot better than I can if you want to go into it. We have a lot of fun with that every year as well. The current liabilities increased as a result of payables related to increased water sales and connection fees. Um, the increase in net pension liability resulted from an increase in the not actually net pension liability actually should have increased the non-current liability. And then deferred outflows and PERS also related to the uh, GASB 68 change, which is actuarial assumptions. So the next paragraph below that talks about our ratios. Um, I won't really get into that unless you want me to. That's 
you know, the quick ratio, days and cash, stuff like that, talks about our operating, um, <coughs> how efficient we are. Uh, on page eight, this is the revenues and expenses and the current year to prior year analysis there. You can see here at the top of the table at the bottom, uh, water sales increased by $4.4 million as a result of drought level one being rescinded. The property taxes <coughs> increased by $332,000. That's mostly as a result of the RDA money that we collect during the year. Uh, reclaimed water sales, they increased as a result of the flows from the water sales increases. Uh, other revenues decreased because we collected less annexation fees during the year. Quick question. Sure. I'm sorry. Uh, going back to the reclaimed water sales, I thought we were consistently selling all that we can produce. Well, I, think we're, I think in that period of time when they were down was, for, was that construction at the uh, LS1. And then well, the LS1, we, we had it diverted water to the outfall instead of sending it to the plant. Yeah. For 60% of the year's use? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure which, which what the variance we're talking about. It's this reclaimed water, so uh, 1.7, it went up from 1.1 to 1.7, so that's 640 to the positive. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, the, the reclaimed water sales per contract is just the, the uh, recovery of our costs. So it, it doesn't have a per acre foot charge that they charge. So our costs went up and uh, we recovered them. So it's just a recovery of costs. But it's it's because we produce more water. It's not mm -hmm. like yeah. more expensive to produce the Correct. water. So we, we have more resources in producing the water. So we pass those costs on to Cena yeah. and to Carl Fett and leave it in. Okay, so we talked about other revenues decreased by $1 million because we collected less annexation fees. Interest expense is lower this year because last year we did the debt refunding and the interest expense included costs related to the debt refunding. The transmission and distribution. Good question again, I'm sorry. Sure. But go back to purchase water. It was at $22 million in 15-16, million in 16-17. Difference of. Uh, yeah. yeah, that would directly correlate with the, the water. So it's the desal okay. and the rebound. And the desal blend and then some more people buying water after the drought. <coughs> that was in the financial highlights. Um, transmission distribution increased as a result of a lot of main breaks this year. We talked about those. They were, they, they're in the monthly financials every month. We had a lot of main breaks. Um, other expenses decreased due to uh, Basically, last year, Encina did a reallocation of their overall assets. So last year, our other expenses were really high as a result of that. So this year, we're kind of coming back to normal. So that decrease is explained by that. So skipping over the rest of page 9 and going on to page 10, um, the table at the bottom of page 10 talks about the capital projects. This is kind of a summary of our large capital projects that are ongoing and contracted. Uh, at least through the design phase. So a lot of those you'll be familiar with. We've got San Marcos Interceptor, uh, Metal Arc Tank Number 3, the Mount Bell Pump Station, the Rock Spring Sewer Replacement, according to the type. Obviously, Thor is going to. probably from another video. Yeah. I thought it was a scotch bottle. So. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how so that's that table there, talk, it's basically the larger uh, capital projects. The table at the bottom, this is kind of a summary of our capital asset additions during the year. Um, and it's actually explained more in note four, but this shows, as you can see, uh, we spent $2.4 million during the year, or capitalized $2.4 million of water main, service lines, meters, valves, and fire hydrants. <coughs> we capitalized- Good question. Yep. I don't know how much is actual fire hydrants, but my understanding was that we don't do the fire hydrants. Yeah, they're not on our books. Huh? We don't own fire hydrants. We're on a service up to the fire hydrant, but not the fire hydrant. Right. So, so the water main service line meters, valves, and fire hydrants yeah, should, that should have be, and fire hydrants. That should be fire hydrant services. That should, be, catch, fire yeah, services should be fire hydrant services. services. Yeah. Not fire hydrants. Yeah, good catch. Probably summarize there just because it's, it's a lengthy title, so we had to cut it off. <laughs> oh, <a little> bit. <laughs> it might be. The <laughs> services <laughs> might be fire hydrants. <laughs> 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 We have $1.4 million in reclamation equipment that was capitalized during the year, added to fixed assets. 628,000 sewer mains, manholes, cleanouts, uh, 500, almost 600,000 sewer vehicles and equipment, and about 300,000 of buildings and improvements. 
And at the bottom again, we actually list the the debt. I'm sorry, when you go building and improvements, what building and improvements are you talking about? It would have been stuff like uh, if we did the roof replacement and other things like that, would be building and improvements. Okay. So the bottom part just lists out the debt. We've got the 2015 revenue bonds, the 2005 COPS, which were later seven and then refunded. Um, we have 2012 COPS, 2008 loan for a total debt of $56.2 million, and that again is detailed in note seven of the financial statements. The final page of the MDNA just talks about our considerations for the 2018 budget, and with all the meetings that we had this year, we uh, were all familiar with, with what was included in the, in the budget for this year. Um, some of the things we looked at were the increase in water usage by customers due to drought restrictions being uh, rescinded, the cost of service study that we approved, that the board approved, uh, recovery and construction, and increasing regulatory compliance. So the budget, as we know, reflects uh, a water sales bounce back, rate increases, and staffing level decreases due to mainly attrition. That's the MDMA. Uh, like I said, it's a summary of the financial statements. If you wanted to look at the financial statements, have any questions about that, I'm happy to. I've seen enough financial statements this year. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I figured, so I figured I'd just go over the fun part. I know. It's anyhow. all generally accepted by us. It's, it's accepted generally too, right? Nice to go. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, any question? Yeah, go ahead. This is an open meeting. Uh, okay. Don't mind me. Um, so, getting back to the auditors, um, the same question we ask you every year. <laughs> I know that your opinion was positive and everything looked great, and that, that's good to hear. Anything uh, we should be aware of? Any concerns? Any red flags? Or is everything just perfect at us? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's everything perfect. But, you know, everything did go very smoothly. The, um, I think one of the only things we really caught was um, when we were testing payroll, one of, you know, we had a timesheet, I believe, that was missing a signature. Um, I think that happened last year, too. <laughs> we, had, we had discussed that. It's not going to preclude, you know, us changing mm -hmm. our audit opinion or anything like that, but it, it increases the amount of procedures that we do over that area. And so we just dig a little deeper, do um, a bit more substantive testing over to I think we just, Did you just change our policy on that too? On um, signatures? Seems to me that something came up about that. I don't know, we discussed it before. It was, it was mentioned before for this audit that yeah. was, we caught, okay. and then we, we put some okay. procedures so in place to double check that. We've our procedures to include reviewing that more thoroughly, so yeah, based on their recommendations. Oh, I thought it was just to do it. We, well, we do it anyway. Do we you do it? Gotta, yeah. Now we yeah. gotta do it even more thorough okay. so they don't find another one next year. Okay. Because yeah. we'll go back and we'll check out that that's been again next year. And yes. bring that up again. Yes. Same employee. Same employee. No, we'll look at that closer <laughs> next year and make sure we're actually doing it. <laughs> and Director Merrick, what you're you remembering from last year would be the inventory. There was a, they did find something where a truck had inventory on it, wasn't accounted for, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. there were two widgets someplace they should have been someplace yeah, else. Yeah, mm -hmm. And they found that, so. That's pretty good. Yeah. Heads rolled, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but as far as uh, you know, findings we don't we're not issuing um, any management letters. There's nothing significant enough to warrant an actual letter. It would just be you know discussions with you guys with management like we've had. Um, so I can kind of touch on some of the procedures if you're curious as to what we tested and what it entails. But you're of the last ten audits that you've done. Mm -hmm. How many did you actually have to write a letter on? Two. Two out of ten. Yeah. 20%? Pretty good. So 20% got letters. All right. That's good to know. I give a letter to one client every year. Really? Because I yeah. get one guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> Segregation of duties. Yeah. 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 Oh. Okay. I just wondered this. Yeah. I don't want to get in depth on any of that. Yeah, I mean, it's your opportunity now as a, as a committee. If uh, you have the financials in front of you, we can you walk through them if you like. Or, you know. <clears throat> well, while that, while they're thinking about that, maybe we can talk about the next step beyond the finance committee. Mm -hmm. As far as December fifth, yeah, six, six. six. No, I think it's six. The next six. board six. meeting, yes, yeah. six. we would take yeah. uh, the, uh, the final, the final draft. Yeah. And right. you know, if there's no further changes or, or comments or anything from anyone here. Um, we would issue our final letter probably early next week, and then you guys would be 
set for the board meeting in early December? We'd have two meetings. We'd have the, a regular uh, Valsius Water District meeting and then a, a finance corp meeting to also accept the uh, <coughs> audit as well. And I probably should have mentioned the only reason why this says draft on it, somebody changed, sorry, I hope I didn't interrupt you, uh, mm -hmm. is that we're actually just doing QAQC right now. We're doing math checking and going through everything to see if there's anything that we need to correct as far as writing. Uh, but there shouldn't be any major changes from this draft. Question and comments. QAC threw me off with the C. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to seeing the C, just a QA. Yeah, and one, one way we gauge how uh, the staff works is journal entries. You know, do we find a lot of journal Because some clients will post 10, 15, 20 journal entries, and we had none that we had to post. That we came up with. That we found that we felt needed to change the financial statements. So that's always a good thing. I always find them before they do, so. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and if you're on any other boards, that's a question you ask your auditors. How many journal entries did you propose to management? To management. Oh, okay. Because that's a sign of. And there were none? And there were none. Hmm. Have you ever had one in the three oh. years? Oh, yeah. Oh, here? Yeah. Oh. Here. I, think so. I don't remember. No, maybe no. on the implementation of Gatsby 68, the yeah, first go around, probably. That, I, think so. we, I think we asked you for those. Yeah, yeah. We asked but, for those, yeah. but other than that, I don't think so. Yeah, in, in the old, old days, there was, um, before I was here, there was like 30 plus. Yeah, and that's usually not good. <laughs> the old days. Before you were the finance manager? Before I was here, yeah. We didn't have, we didn't have a, we didn't have an accountant on, on the staff, so we relied a lot on the auditors to, to help. So this, is, this is this is the third year, is that correct? I believe. This is the completion of the third year on December fifth. Yeah, six. Six? <laughs> I'll be on the fifth. Yeah. So I'll be somewhere else on the fifth. So. Let me know how it worked out. On the sixth. Uh, um, and then we go we go out to bid next year. Is that correct? I believe that's, 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 that's the way we've set up on the board that we, they can rebid it? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Much cheaper because they know you guys now. Yep. They know where the coffee's at, they know where... Not at all. Where the, where the beer bottles are. <laughs> where the beer bottles get upstairs. Yeah. So, you know, my hope when we when this goes to the full board is that the committee would recommend approval, obviously recommend, say that you went through the finance committee and it was clean and you support the, the findings. Let me have a conversation with the rest of the committee. I think so. I, I think you know, yeah. the but action, we'll, we'll recommend this to the board. I did have a, a kind of a question, probably not going to know the answer to it, but if you remember, I think it was in year one, we had you guys take a little bit of a deeper dive into the um, our legal, our expenses mm -hmm. for uh, legal services. And, and, you know, we're now um, going through an RFP process for those services, and one of the things that um, we've learned through that process is that we're getting billed an average of about 20 hours a week for services, for the legal services, which kind of struck us as being high. I mean, that's half of a full-time job, right? So, um, do you guys remember, or maybe if you guys have notes to go back to look at, and, and it's okay if you don't, um, but I know it was two years ago, and I can't remember two weeks ago, but. Um, you know, did you guys pick up on that and kind of, was that a, kind of a red flag, 20 hours a week, um, average billing, you know, when you kind of, like, I think we were having you guys specific, specifically look at kind of the accountability for the time that we were, that was being billed to us. I don't remember off the top of my head. We have the work papers still, whatever was provided at that meeting with you guys, we still have. So I could go back and, and take a look and pass it back on to you guys so that you can look at it again. Um, but typically, the amount of hours that are being billed isn't something that we're necessarily one to, yeah, it's hard to judge, because yeah, it just depends on but, what they're working on. But for, and but for us, as a board, you can't use a dollar amount, because one person might charge $100 an hour, another $1,000 an hour, mm -hmm. this guy takes 10 hours, this guy takes a half hour. So you can't use the hourly rate. Mm -hmm. You have to use, in my mind, in our the mind, number of think, hours. the number of hours they did last year, divide that and say, well, then you work 20 hours a week here, is that correct? Is that half your practice that's here? Mm -hmm. It sheds a little different light on it. If, but we know sometimes attorneys charge 80 hours in a week to four different clients. I mean, that, that's a yes. practice. They probably, you probably audit attorneys. 
<laughs> Plus, every firm has multiple attorneys. It's not just one guy spending half of his time. And like for our current firm, they have three attorneys that provide services. For sure. Us, so. Sure. Maybe their rates half and they work slow. Yeah. That's, it. That's exactly true. Well, you might be on. Yeah. Could, yeah. might be on something. Yeah. Yeah. So you you got get away with that. Yeah. You just gotta try to figure that out. Yeah, I remember. If I remember, you didn't come back with much because it's not. I think you guys were just verifying that the billing, you know, they they billed us for ten hours, you know, that that the, the dollar amount equipped, you know, matched up with the number of hours billed. So I don't, I think it was basically just kind of actual, uh, you know, time versus the the spend. Or trends so. maybe too. I think it's trends. I don't remember seeing trends, but if you have it, that'd be cool. Yeah, if you can maybe. Um, if you happen to find it, and, it, and again, if you, if you can, that's that's okay. But okay. if you can maybe forward it to Glenn, and he can pass it on to us just to kind of refresh our memories yeah. on it. Yeah. So I think that'd be helpful. But I've been uh, I'm I'm very happy to hear that um, our team is doing a great job as always, and it's been a, a pretty smooth auditing process for the last three years. So thank you guys, and um, I don't really have a whole lot more. To I want to thank you. Especially putting up my rantings about why are we here, why are we doing this, when it doesn't really mean much. Because um, it doesn't really tell me the staff doing a good job. If they're doing a good job, they can cover up very well. You know what I'm saying? It, it's a lot of different things. So I just, I keep looking at Bell and Ross on New York and keep going, they had all those. <laughs> but they wouldn't see what those guys were because that's not something to look for. So at least I've learned that much. I've learned that. From what you found, it's very, very good. But there's certain things you look for, and certain things that really aren't in your purview. So, thank you very much. It's been, it's been a pleasure working with both of you. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta look up the town in Illinois that got robbed. That's great reading. Oh, really? I can't remember the name of it. That's been a while ago. They stole $52 million over 20 years. Really? Check that out. How do we the finest department? You added that to your fraud uh, lecture? You're still doing uh, fraud No, I wasn't. I did, that, when I did that seminar, that was one of the things I thought about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do a fraud lecture? At one of the CSDA conferences. Uh, where was it at? Uh, Monterey? Yeah, it was Monterey. Yeah. The first Monterey. That was CFD Scott. No, we just did a little talk. Yeah. Was, but that was one of the things I looked up. Oh. $52 million. Oh. <laughs> uh, happens all the time. Over I mean, 20 years. In the private sector as well. Yeah. Certainly not unique to public sector. Right. Motion to close. Sure. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.